Now let's consider the difference between phase modulation and frequency modulation. So phase modulation, we will take the angle theta t and we are going to vary that angle linearly with the message. So we're going to change the angle linearly with the message. This means that if we want to find the instantaneous frequency, it might be a little bit difficult to determine, and that's because we're going to have to perform a derivative. But for frequency modulation, we're going to take the instantaneous frequency, and we're going to change the instantaneous frequency linearly with the message. This means that the angle might be a little bit difficult to determine because we're going to need to perform an integral in order to find the angle. Now, for phase modulation, the generalized modulation angle is going to be some theta t equals the carrier frequency multiplied by t plus some theta naught that's unknown plus some kp times the message. Now, it's okay to assume that theta naught is equal to zero, which will simplify this a little bit. And we can also assume that kp, this modulating constant, is going to be a constant. Now, this is going to lead to theta t equals omega c times t plus kp times the message. So for phase modulation, the generalized modulated signal is going to be phi pm is equal to a cosine of some theta t. If we substitute the theta t, we can see that the phase modulated signal is going to be a cosine omega ct plus kp times that message. Now, at any given time, we could find the instantaneous frequency of the phase modulated signal by performing a derivative of the angle. Now, if we perform the derivative of that angle, we'll take that angle, we'll take the derivative, and we can see that the derivative of the omega ct part is going to be omega c. And then the derivative of the other part, we can move the constant out, and it's going to be some constant kp multiplied by the derivative of the message. We don't know what the message derivative is all the time, so we might rewrite it like this, where we just write m dot as the message derivative. Now let's think about frequency modulation. So for frequency modulation, we're going to modulate the instantaneous frequency by the message. And remember, this means we're going to have to find the integral if we want to know the angle. So keep that in mind. So let's start out by assuming that uh, kf, again, is going to be a constant. So let's figure, see if we can determine the angle. So the angle is going to be the integral of the instantaneous frequency. So let's substitute in the instantaneous frequency. Now, if we want to find the integral of the, instant, of the message, we might not always have any information about the message before time zero, so we can just simplify this to uh, integral from zero to t. And this would give us some angle theta t, which is omega ct plus the integral of kf times the message from zero to t. Now this means that the modulated signal, the frequency modulated signal, could be written like this. Or substituting in, the frequency modulated signal is going to be A times the cosine of omega ct plus some constant kf multiplied by an integral of the message.